If we flip over to the mix window, we can look at our plugin processing chain on this track. You can see that the first plugin I have inserted is the Avid 7 Band EQ3. And I've done a little bit of tweaking here to boost some of the low mids and some of the highs in order to enhance the sound a little bit, but nothing too drastic. The next plugin in the chain is the Dynamics 3 Compressor Limiter. Once again, I'm using a little bit of light compression to get the peak levels where I want them to be, but also to bring out a little bit of the low level detail. Finally, you can see that I have a de inserted with a pretty basic setting for male voice. We don't really have any sibilance in these particular clips, but anytime you'll be converting your clips to a lower bit depth, it can be helpful to do some subtle de -essing. So that's the basic plugin chain that I would use on pretty much any dialogue track. Be sure to check out my other videos for a more in-depth discussion of EQ compression and de -essing. Next, we'll look at one example of some creative plugin processing. Let's use the air frequency shifter to give the enemy dialogue a more interesting sound. And generally, I'll browse through the presets here to find a starting point that I like. If you don't have loop playback enabled, this is a great place to use it so that the clip will continue to loop while you audition plugin settings. Once you've found a setting that you like, you're ready to move on to the mastering phase. Generally, when you're mastering studio recorded dialogue, all you really need is a limiter on the mix bus. In this case, we'll go ahead and use the free Maxim plugin that comes with all Pro Tools systems. And the mixing limiter preset is a good starting point. Here you can see I have a ceiling of minus 0.1 dB to prevent clipping, and we're going to boost gain on the signal by 6 dB. If you look on the input side of the metering, you can see that our input is coming in at about minus 4 dB. If you look at the metering on the output side, you can see that we're pushing right up against 0 dB full scale. This is exactly where we want to be to make the most of the dynamic range that we have available without overlimiting or distorting the sound. Now we're ready to print our edited, processed, and mastered takes to the bounce track in the session. First, we'll need to route the output of our mastering track to the bounce bus, which is already set as the input to our bounce track. Then we'll go ahead and switch back over to the edit window. Now all I need to do is record enable the bounce track, select the first take of dialog, and begin recording. Then I'll select the second take, and the third take. Then I'll disable record and give the resulting clips their final name. If I had a lot of clips to rename, I could use the auto rename function in Pro Tools, but it's really not necessary when we only have three clips. We'll look at using auto rename in our Foley project. Now we're ready to export these clips to implement in the game. First, I'll go to the clip list and select the three clips. Then from the clip list pop-up menu, I'll choose export clips as files. Here you can set the file type, format, bit depth, sample rate, and conversion quality for all of the files that you're about to export. In our case, we're going to use mono wave files with a bit depth of 16-bit and a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. Note that when using export clips as files, Pro Tools automatically applies dither when you export from 24 to 16-bit. Next, you'll want to verify the destination directory and then click export. As you can see, the export process is faster than real time. Now we can go to our desktop and actually verify that the file is exported correctly.
and now we're ready for implementation.